each party's rights and payments whatever are the rights and payment of the contract is identifiable the measurement is going to be an entity shall be recognized by the amount allocated transaction price as revenue the cost to fulfill and contract entity should recognize asset from the cost incurred if the contract cost Good morning and welcome to the session 5 in unit 4 where we are going to talk about an important topic of revenue from contracts with the customers and which is going to be recorded using the Indian Accounting Standard 115. So let's go and have a look into it. Now in this, the Indian Accounting Standard 115 aims at providing the following details in the contractual revenue cash flows to the user. First thing is the nature of the contract. Second thing, the amount that is involved. The third thing is the timing factor. And then we are also going to talk about uncertainty of the revenue from customer contracts. Now, let me just try to put an example here in order to make you understand how does this contract from the customers come inside. Now, let's say that companies like Accenture, KPMG, Ernest and Young, or when we are going to talk about PricewaterhouseCoopers or Capgemini, these are all IT consulting plus pure consulting firms altogether. So when they engage with a client in terms of a consulting project, let's say they are doing a consulting for a bank in terms of financial reconstruction. So now what is going to happen here is that the consulting firm will try to engage with its client under the following factors. The nature of consulting, the nature of consulting involved is on finance and strategy. The amount, so let's say the consulting is going to be worth $1 million. So amount is going to be $1 million for the service that they are going to provide. Timing is going to be, let's say, six months. So within six months, the business has to be completed. And the uncertainty, for example, in between, if the customer says that, no, I am not happy with this, I am not able to get the fruitful results altogether. So it can immediately go and cancel it. So this is where they are going to involve themselves into the various standards of accounting that is going to be prescribed, followed by the scope of this particular accounting standard. It is first going to talk about the lease contract. What is the lease contract? That will be explained in accounting standard AS17. Then the insurance contracts. What are the insurance contracts that we have engaged with? AS104 followed by financial instruments and other contractual rights and obligation. Indian accounting standards 109 and 110. Non-monetary exchange between entities doing similar business in order to facilitate sales to the customers. So this is also going to be monitored. This is also going to be looked into altogether. Now with all these factors tuning in, just have a tune factor here. Why? Because the lease contract, these things will not be counted at all. So that's why I say NTT should apply the standard to all customer contract except the lease insurance financial, non-monetary, these factors will not be included in terms of the AS115 standard. It will only talk about the pure consulting, pure services that are being rendered to the customer at any given point of time. So you should not include all these factors because you have the standards for that. Lease contracts will be under 17 or probably an insurance contract will be under 104. So you will have its own standards standards through which things are going to be measured followed by the recognition pattern what is the recognition factor here identifying the contract the first thing is that following criteria should be met for accounting contract under this standard first thing is Parties to the contract have approved for this contract. That's very, very important. Parties are committed to perform this particular standard. Each party's rights and payment for that has been identified. A contract has been commercial substance probable collection of consideration by the entity. So let's look at the standards clearly. 
first of all let's identify the contract has the contract been identified between the concerned person the client and the customer following which the criteria should be met for accounting contract clearly now what is going to happen parties to the contract have approved the contract yes they have approved for it fine accepted parties are committed for this performing their respective obligation that is also accepted yes i have understood it clearly each party's rights and payments whatever are the rights and payment of the contract is identifiable that is also identified at the length at the arm length yes we have done it next the contract as a commercial substance there should be a meaning as we say offer and acceptance there should be a meaning why this has to be done and what pace it has to be done so there, there is a understanding here completely so that has to be followed very very clearly by which on receipt of the consideration from customer without meeting the above standard entity can recognize revenue only suppose i want to still go further and recognize the revenue without following the previous standard then when it is possible contract has been terminated and considered received as non-refundable so we have lost the money there at that time you can go ahead and clear the signing saying that yes we have not been able to proceed further it has been terminated so whatever value whatever loss or whatever factors can be identified and written then and there itself so it is done next the entity has no remaining obligations to transfer the goods or services the customer has paid on the substantial part of consideration which is non-refundable suppose the customer has decided that he has not gone ahead he has not made the payment it's a non-refundable basis altogether again in that case there would be an obligation which cannot be understood which cannot be refunded then this has to continue we have to terminate it across and we have to say that whether it has been done or not now in most of the cases in consulting let me just give you an idea or an example here if the client decides at some point of time that they are not able to go further and get any fruitful results out of it or they find that the consulting is going way beyond their thought process they are not able to achieve their targets somewhere down the lane this is becoming an expensive affair altogether then at that point of time automatically the client will go ahead and cancel it so it will be a loss to the service or organization altogether so that is why most of the service organization put down their SLA they say service level agreement let me just write down this factor for you it's called as SLA which stands for service level agreement they say to what extent the service will be provided what is the nature timing factor so that in case if this going to happen in terms of termination or going back the service providing companies are not affected they will get their revenue at any point of time so that is why i say service level agreement is mandatory it is accepted in nature followed by the measurement here the measurement is going to be an entity shall be recognized by the amount allocated transaction price as revenue once it is performed as an obligation it is satisfied next the transaction price which it can be fixed or variable amount is determined based on the terms of contact the entities customary practice so what we try to do here is that an entity shall recognize the amount that has been allocated transaction price as revenue once the performance has been obligation is satisfied and the transaction price which can be fixed on the variable amount so whatever is the factor on based on those terms and conditions we will be able to recognize it we will be able to take that as an entity's customary practice because that is where things are going to work that is how we will be able to measure the revenue so whatever standards whatever uh, values has been told has been understood by the system will be clearly put in so that you know you are able to go ahead and satisfactorily able to decide that this is what we have been doing this is how the revenue has been recognized altogether so that is why this uh, factor is very very important followed by the contract cost now contract cost is very very important why because 
incremental cost of obtaining a contract with a customer, entity should recognize the asset if the entity expects to recover those cost factor expenses which an entity would have not incurred if the contract has not been obtained. So if the contract has not obtained, where it has not obtained, why it has not been done, all those factors will be looked into, into the account and they would be recognized, they would be determined, yes, this is what we have been doing, this is how it has to be recognized. So the values would be recognized automatically. Now why we are saying this is that the incremental cost. Now if I have to attain a contract and if there is going to be an extra expense on that, there is going to be a, a hike up in terms of price, in terms of the cost factors, that incremental cost with the customer, the entity should be Recognize. So you need to understand that if the entity expects to recover that cost, he has to go back to the client and he has to pitch it in such a way saying that these are all the costs that we have incurred during the factor of consulting, during the factor of doing the job. So we expect to recover the cost. We expect to take it back. So he has to provide in such a manner that entity would have not incurred the contract. And so for example, you know, sales commission or sales commission is something which the client gives you as an obligation factor saying that thank you for promoting my product but then it is not mandatory every time it's not fixed every time that is exactly the amount will come in order to manage your cost you should have gone before itself and told the client clearly that this is the amount of commission that I would be expecting by the sales of the product so before even when you go and fix up the sales you tell that this is what we are recognizing this fact have to be told clearly then only we will be able to recognize the cost factor now the cost to fulfill and contract entity should recognize asset from the cost incurred if the contract cost now first thing is that relate directly to the contract if the, it is specifically identified sir I am doing a telecom consulting or I am doing a finance consulting or a healthcare consulting so specifically I have identified the entity here clearly saying that this is what we are into so the contract is now going to clearly specify that this is what it has been done the consulting is being done generate or enhance resources with the entity used in satisfying performance obligation in future now this is something where i am enhancing myself i'm giving something more better in order to you know go ahead and do that performance do that obligation factor clearly so that in future you are able to generate some value you are able to generate some more contracts some more factors altogether so in that way also this is mandatory this is needed next it is expected to recover when it is expected to recover now you know that after giving the consulting after giving the services all together beyond the period of time yes it is expected to recover back so at that point also the contract cost can be recognized can be ultimately taken into account so these factors have to be understood very very clearly why because unless and until you are able to understand the factors of how to enable the cost the accounting standards would become difficult followed by presentation what is presentation when either party of the contract has performed that is the client or the customer an entity shall present the contract in the balance sheet as a contract asset or a contract liability depending on the relationship between entity's performance and customer's payment if i have successfully completed my consulting if the client has accepted me there is a fruitful result out of it the customer will go ahead and make the payment to me so in that case i will be recognizing this contract as a successful contract where I have recognized this as a revenue because the client is happy with me and he has made the payment for the services that I have rendered. In the other way around, suppose the consulting did not work out well with the client. The client was unsatisfied. He felt that at some point, at some juncture, the uh, contract was revoked then that would become a liability because I was not able to perform the duty and even the liability has to be recognized as per the accounting standard so that is why we say an entity shall present 
unconditional rights to the consideration separately as receivable. So whatever might be the situation, it might be a successful consulting services render or an unsuccessful. So it might be a revenue or it might be a liability. We are not bothered about it. What we want is the transparent presentation in the book of accounts stating that what is the revenue, what is the cost that is involved. With this, I come to the end of this session. I hope and believe that the session was highly informative and of a great resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we shall try to understand the different levels of accounting standards that is changing the modern corporate world today. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful presentation.